around the world and for the great Dion. Welcome back to another episode of the Guy Stuff Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Claiborne, joined as always by my brother from halfway around the world, John Espy. And we are super stoked today to be joined by an up and coming, amazing UFC fighter. If you've not seen this guy fight yet, what are you waiting for? What is your problem? Joe Selecki is hanging out with us today, man. Thanks for being with us today. Man, thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it, man. I'm excited. Uh, I was going to say, uh, you know, like, if you haven't seen this guy fight, what are you waiting for? I was like, you probably don't have the low-level streaming services that I fall on. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the issue. <laughs> no. But now ESPN Plus, so now, now, now fair game. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. There's always YouTube. YouTube is always right. there, man. You know, exactly. It's true. Yeah, that's, Check that's it out. Exactly, man. <laughs> That's like, I don't, I don't, like, how do people, like, I don't even know how people watch fights. Like, I, I guess if I had these streaming services and stuff or gets the, the, like, the sports plaque package plus or whatever it is, like, I had to do YouTube, man. That's all I can yep. Or do some pirated stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah. allegedly pirated stuff. I ain't, I ain't saying that I would condone any. <laughs> that's, that's me, man. I'm a huge <laughs> fight fan. Yeah. And like all the UFCs, I've had to pirate. Like the <laughs> before the Contender Series, there was a the John Jones pay per view was like yeah. three nights before, and somebody's texted me about it. I said, "Man, I was like, I'm sitting in my hotel room. I can't afford to rent the pay per view, so <laughs> I don't know what's going on. You have to tell me." Exactly, <laughs> exactly, man. Um, and and like so, so that don't know, uh, John, uh, um, John, Joe, <laughs> Joe, uh, won his um, his uh, contract on the uh the contender series man that's how he he fought his way into a contract uh man and and uh that had to be amazing man that had to be like uh um, um like something out of a stinking movie you know to, to like, cause... makes rocky look like you know yeah, play. <laughs> yeah. that's what like, i said i was like oh god no i was gonna say because everybody that night got a contract like I, was, all the fighters were so good everybody got like not everybody but all the fight the five winners you know, got a contract mm-hmm. that night. So that's freaking. Yeah, it was a special night on the show. And then also, like, uh, you know, when you fight regular, like if I would have just made my UFC debut, got called up from the regional scene, there is no highlight of your life or anything like that. Like, especially being the main fight on the card, mm-hmm. they showed so much about me, my wife, our, our story. I was like, I said, I was like, I get hit by a truck tomorrow. Like, <laughs> that's my Rocky moment. I'll probably have more, hopefully, God willing. But I was like, yeah. you know, our kids can come back and watch this one day. It's pretty cool stuff. So, I was, we were, yeah, just a blessing. That's awesome, man. That's, that's awesome. It's got to be freaking amazing. And and Joe trains out there with a a, a good friend of ours, um, um, John Salter at Salty Dog Jiu Jitsu, uh, out in Wilmington, North Carolina. And man, we're just man, it's just uh, such a amazing team out there. You guys are just like I was telling uh, Anthony a second ago before we started podcast. We just might go out there and hanging out with John, doing some stuff and doing some training out there with him. I was like, man, you gonna walk in? You walk into the belly of the beast because every one yeah. of them jokers are monsters out there, dude. Y'all are just some freaking monsters. Yeah, it's a fun place, man. It's a, it's a like everybody's funny, everybody has a great time, but then there is just killers there. Yeah, I was think, I was looking around yesterday, like <laughs> look at all the guys that are traveling to train together because mm. we're kind of becoming like a little hub in our area, and mm. yeah. uh, like my old teammates from Myrtle Beach come up, and guys come from all over, you know, the Carolinas and stuff, and on Saturdays especially we get sparring, and this guy's a pro. We had three, four guys cut with fights coming up in big promotions, You're like that's pretty crazy in a small little gym in a small little yeah. town. So uh, what an awesome place. And John's the, the head of the pack, man, just an awesome, awesome guy. And yeah. just a really good example that I think people kind of need it in this area. Cause we don't have many people in bigger promotions and stuff yeah. from, from out this way. So Heck yeah. Yeah. just the best. And, and you know, ma- go ahead. Sorry, go ahead no. I was just going to say, I think you hit the nail on the head really well. What I was kind of vibing on, on what you, ha- you guys have going there is that definitely, uh, your gym is becoming a hub. Uh, that's what I was kind of picking up from what I could see is just a lot of people are coming into that area. And really it's a great, I mean, Wilmington is a beautiful town in, is, in and of itself. Mm-hmm. And it's got an airport. So if you're flying in from somewhere, you can fly into Wilmington. Uh, it's, which, you know, I don't know how COVID's affecting that, but it, it's, it's kind of becoming, a, a, you know, definitely I, I can see you guys, uh, becoming a hub. If if I understood correctly, you were, are you you're a Sarah Jiu Jitsu guy? Is that correct? Well, so I was actually my whole life. I trained up in New Jersey under my instructor John Hassett. I left and then was still kind of under him when I went to Myrtle Beach because there was no black belt that I was under. 
And then uh, I was like an MMA gym that I was training at. And then I linked up with uh, a Sarah gym down there, an instructor named Frankie, uh, Frank Shower. They call him Frankie Patches. Uh, really good jiu-jitsu. The Sarah affiliate was great. Uh, we ended up having a little falling out, just some professional stuff and, and some personal stuff. Um, but I did learn a lot from him, but I got my brown belt under him. So okay. all my other belts have been, including my black belt, have been from my childhood lifelong instructor, John Hassett. But I did spend two and a half or so years under a Sarah affiliate and got to cross train up in New York. And Matt Sarah was awesome. We got to go to Longo's once. That was great. And I learned, I still use a lot of the techniques that I learned um, from Frankie and the Sarah affiliate, you know, which is probably the first time I've said that in like in a conversation <laughs> recording. I don't, we don't really talk much anymore, but I do have, Tons we're of respect. Good news here. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're like that show. I forget what the show was in the nineties. Forgive or forget. It was like a segment on it. <laughs> they come out behind the door. They make up. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, you know, I, I I did learn a lot over there. Uh, I got my MMA career started over there. So, uh, but I am a black belt under uh, under John Hassett and Team Balance in New Jersey. And now, you know, obviously I train under John Salter and South Dog Jiu Jitsu. Okay. But. Good deal. Man, that's awesome, dude. That's all, and that's one of the things. Like you're talking about with the the with John and those guys that they're people are training with. I mean, I think his heart for Jesus is what makes that gym so like welcoming. Even though there's freaking monsters everywhere in there, it's like I was well, like when John was on the podcast, we're talking about him, talking about it. I was like, I was, never met this guy before in my life. Walked up, and hung out. With, I, I was connected with Bri- uh, Brian uh, Crandall. Uh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. a great guy. Yeah, and this super sweet guy, man. He's he's helped us out a, a ton with uh, geese for GIs, and he sent he's like I got two of my geese from him from from being able to actually to, to, I didn't have a gee, and so he sent me one, and so um, just an amazing guy. So I walked in, don't know anybody there, and Mountain just everybody there was amazing. Just a fun group of guys, and and they were whooping the crap out of me, but they <laughs> but they were they were all nice, you know, just super sweet. Yeah. And well, that's the thing about John too is is and that was probably the biggest decision in our decision or biggest factor in our decision to move here to train was like, yeah, we can if you're gonna pack up everything and go somewhere to train, like it's a big move no matter if it's an hour and a half like it was for us or you know ten hours to Coconut Creek or New York or wherever you're gonna go, you know. But our biggest conversation that me and my wife had was like, look, we're gonna go here, and if we train under this guy you know, it's up to me to win fights. I may not, yeah. you know, yeah. but I'm going to be a better man being yeah. around a good man. You know, yeah. and that was the biggest thing was, you know, I've always had my faith, but getting stronger in it from someone who just was going to push me. Cause you know, they always say, if you're the best guy in the room, time to find a new room, but it, same thing with <laughs> every other area, you know, if you're the best at whatever it is and he's so, you know, just, holds everything to such a high standard. Yeah. Uh, that was our decision was like, look, we're going to become better people being around John and Lindsay and all their friends and who they allow in the gym. And yeah. it really it has proved true. You know, like we've seen our, our, just our personal life and our growth just from being around them. Mm. That's, man. that's good. Fantastic. Heck yeah. Um, you know, and that's what I'd like, there's uh, if, if those that, that are have may have heard the name salty dog, Jitsu or, or, or John Salter, uh, you may have heard him from the fights, uh, but probably most people have heard him, heard of him or seen yeah. him from, from the freaking videos yeah. from y'all's videos <laughs> that come out of salty dog. Um, the, the, um, uh, people getting slung across the room and screaming. Um, and so, um, I plan to get slung across the room. That's one yeah. Of the I'm yeah. For. yeah. What's the, what's the cat's cool. name that, that gets, that gets slung around? I can't remember his name. Tucker. Yeah. Tucker. 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 Coach Tucker. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, now there's a rumor that they're going to be on ridiculousness. Is that what it is? Ridiculousness. Yeah. I think they're going to, they're going to air one of the videos on like that show ridiculousness on MTV. Wow. I believe, I think it's sometime this summer. I couldn't That's be totally fantastic. wrong, but uh, awesome. it's so funny to see how just uh, everybody goofing off and being silly, you know, took off. And that's what everybody knows. You know, John's been like recognized in the airport for that, and, like yeah, all kinds of good. places. He's like, you know, I do have a pretty darn good fighting career too, you know, but I love him for the videos. So, hey. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way it goes. They're hilarious. They're yeah. Hilarious, man. But Sometimes you just got to take what you can get where you yeah. can get. A hundred percent. That's what you do. So you, you said something that I thought was really great, uh, Joe. You were talking about just the, the family atmosphere within the gym. And, and part of your reason for coming to Wilmington uh, was just, you know, you can go a lot of places and train to be a, a, a better fighter, but you have that relationship that helps you be uh, a, a better man. 
uh, that that's so huge. And, and, you know, that's, that's obviously what we want to do with the guy stuff podcast. We, we goof, we cut up a lot. We make fun of each other and things like that. Uh, but we, we, at the end of the day, we want to grow and learn. So if you could just, just kind of take us into a moment, maybe if you're cool with it, just a few areas that you feel like maybe uh, being partnered with you know, John and, and as helped you to, to, to grow just maybe some areas yeah. challenged you in. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, it's funny because, you know, obviously we're very different people. Like, you know, John's from Alabama. I'm from New Jersey. I might be a little more aggressive in some ways because I'm fighting my inner Yankee every single day down here, you know, trying not to be a, a hothead or whatever it might be. But, you know, that being said, it's like there was a lot of similarities in our lives. You know, maybe the paths that we got there were different. But, like, when we moved here, you know, I was five and one. Um, you know, my wife had just gotten kind of, a, a, you know, her job that she had settled into because she was always in the service industry. And we were in Myrtle Beach. She finally got a job, like, um, you know, working with the state and like kind of like a, getting out of the service industry and something more steady and benefits and all that. And that was kind of when I met John. We made the decision to move here to train. She had to give that up. And, you know, there was a lot of similarities between us as a couple and him and Lindsay. And, like, he had been cut from the UFC at 25, and I was 25 moving here. Mm. Just a lot of stuff. Uh, my first fight here, I lost. I was 5-2, and two, 25, no steady job. He went through the same thing, but on a bigger scale, being cut from the UFC. You know, it took him a while to build back, and all this stuff that was just um, – that was one big thing. It was like, oh, I, I had never seen that in my career because I was in a town where I was training with all young guys like myself, and the only people that were taking control of the coaching weren't actually – without, you know, without, you know, kind of – putting them down, they weren't successful. You know, maybe they had 500 records or they were guessing at what it took to be successful or they just weren't strong role models, you know, which to be critical of somebody's character, I don't want to do that. But, you know, we've got to grow. I can't just be policing myself or, you know, and uh, that was one really big decision, you know, was being around them for that. And the other thing I always used to think about was uh, I'm a big Frankie Edgar fan. I love that team up there, just Mark Henry, those guys. And I always hear Mark Henry talk about his team. He'd be like, man, we're a unit, we're a family, we, we barbecue together, we hang out together. We all, lo- he, he always said the same phrase, we all love the Lord and we go to church together on Sunday. I was like, man, mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine at that point in my life being surrounded by people like that. You know, and mm-hmm. today, like my wife and I, we're in church, John's sitting right to, next to me on my right. You know, like it's having a unit like that where I can pray with people before a fight. I can be around people that believe the same things that I believe in and you know, by a trickle down effect is we can then use the gym, use tournaments, use whatever it is to go hopefully help other people change their life for the better. Not only by example, but just by, by the things we talk about on the, on the regular, you know, we like to have a good time. We all make fun of each other and all of that. But at the end of the day is we're all there for each other. And that family can give a lot of people, especially in jiu-jitsu that haven't had that before a place to call home. And then maybe they start to get curious about what we do in our free time and they start to see, Maybe they come to church. Maybe they, you know, whatever it might be. So um, th- that was the biggest thing because I'm only going to be a fighter for as much as it is my life. And I fight this every day because I'm so type A. Uh, I obsess with fighting. But I'm really going to be a fighter until I'm, what, 35, 40, if, like, I'm one of those crazy people that fights until I'm 40. But I've got to be a, a man and an adult and a human being till I die. So uh, hopefully that's a lot later than I fight. So, you know, that's – we've talked – you know, like you said – with the theme of the podcast is the same thing as just being a, a good man. I had to kind of make that decision of, do I want to go get lost in the pack in Jersey or in Florida or in California? Or do I want to be directly under someone who I can learn a lot about a lot from? And that was, it was a no brainer. Yeah. That's something too about, I mean, being, being involved, I guess any, any sport, but uh, specifically, so specifically in jujitsu, um, I've got to share the gospel on the mat more than I have in probably any other facet of my life. And I'm a missionary. Like that's like, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really odd, you know, like um, how that works. Like just when you're sweating together and you're bleeding together and you're beating each other up and man, it, it is a bond that grows that, you know, that, that you can, you can open up and talk to people about it. And they listen to you because they know, you know, you're actually there and you care about each other and you're, and you're, and you're, uh, you're all suffering the same stuff. And so, uh, that's, uh, we were talking about, my brother and I were talking about this with everything that's going on in the world. Mm. Not that I tune out of the news, but I, I mean, until COVID, I really didn't watch any news. But uh, when you're hearing about all, you know, all the hate and everybody just destroying each other and all the arguments on social media, 
I said to my brother, I was like, not to be ignorant, but like the world that I live in doesn't really have that. Cause I mean, when you're doing this full time every day, like you're with people of all walks of life. Like I just can't imagine hating somebody because of what they believe in or because of yeah. where they're from or because you got too many bigger fish to fry when you're on the match trying to, yeah. you know, choke each other and beat each other up and trying you're all training that. for something. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> you just learn acceptance and you learn just to, to kind of grow with people. And like you said, you just share so many different bonds that, Maybe you aren't sharing on the day to day, you know, yeah. at work or wherever. Maybe even as, even as a missionary, like yeah. it's just crazy how much you can change each other's lives through martial arts. It's really really cool. Well, that, that goes to I, I used to be a school teacher, and I said for years that martial arts should be taught in public schools. Uh, I I felt like martial arts, you know, specifically jujitsu, judo, things like that, should be taught in schools because a I felt like you deal with your bullying problem. It's like mm -hmm. done. I mean, like you're not, people got issue. Let's settle it on the mat. Yeah. Two, I, I, there's that, that, that brotherhood and sisterhood. And, and there's that humility factor that I don't feel like you necessarily get in a lot of other places. And, and I love other sports. I've coached other sports, but I don't feel like you necessarily get it a lot of other places. And I, I've, I feel like those those who participate, it's and it does seem to be. I feel like more prevalent in in things like jujitsu. It just seems to be not to. I mean, just not to put down anybody else's art, but it just does seem to be more prevalent in that world. But but I think you hit on something, both you guys too. Like, man, we we need to carry our faith everywhere with us, mm -hmm. like just everywhere. And and it's not always like thumping your 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 Bible. It's being. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's probably more important even is to be that light in those places. Just a thought. Oh, 100%. I couldn't agree more. That's exactly it is, is just how you live your life, you know, and because uh, you can say all the right things. Like, and, and honestly, like John Jones is one of his people that he says all the right things, but he almost does all the wrong things. So you're like, yeah. he's almost using, you know, his faith and, and things like that as like a crutch to not get in you know, get the max sentence. Whereas like he's doing the same things Mike Perry does. Mike Perry says things that are worse mm -hmm. and then, you know, gets the hammer ball down on him, but they're both doing wrong things and setting bad examples, you know, and uh, not to, you know, they're, they're obviously no, great fighters no, and stuff, yeah. but, but it's like, yeah, it's actions, you know, and that really is the world we live in is you know, actions speak louder than words or they should, you know, yeah. social media may prove otherwise, but yeah. uh yeah, you're exactly right. It's it, it's crazy, man. It's 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 interesting to see how 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 um, how our 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 walk as a walk our walk as Christians, um, you know, gets to uh, to 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 play out in our everyday lives and in sports and those kind of things. And and what Anthony was talking talk about a little bit about that that ego check stuff. I mean, there's ego everywhere, but um, I mean, it seems to be like you. It's really hard to keep a high ego. Yeah. Um, in, in a contact sport, whether it's jujitsu or judo or Muay Thai, sometimes you actually get there and get in, mixing things up. It's really hard to keep an ego. Cause, yeah. cause you may be like, I, my whole, my saying is always some days you're the hammer, some days you're the nail, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, yeah. uh, and most time it's the nail. And so you can't, hundred percent, you can't get a big head about it. Cause you know, you're going to get somebody to come out and whoop you. Um, yeah. So I think that's, that's something I think is missing in a lot of people's lives. A lot of kids lives today is that, that man doing something hard and not, and, and you can't get a participation medal in this. Like, yeah, you, you going, Wait, so there's, no, there's no participation medals in the UFC. There's not like a <laughs> participation yeah. belt. <laughs> yeah. We're so, we're, we're sorry you didn't get your win bonus, but we're going to give it to you anyway. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so talking about the UFC kind of stuff, um, like the whole, the, the whole COVID thing kind of threw everything off. Um, like what is the fight Island? Like, is this like a, y'all get on a boat and freaking like <laughs> go over there, like on a dragon boat. And there's like, you got to fight dudes with like claws and stuff. Like what? <laughs> John Claw Van Damme's. Exactly. The there, there's literally like, the, like a, like a, like a, 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 a clone a of John Claw. <laughs> It does things. Yeah. A platform in the water that kind of is on yeah, exactly. you might fall off. Exactly. That's what I was picturing. Exactly. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so to my understanding, I was booked, you know, when I had to back out, was I was booked in, in Vegas. So it would have been the apex. So business as usual, kind of like the contender series. 
But I guess it's Yaz Island, which was kind of disappointing, even though it's a great place, because it's already an island. It's already an established island. I want the, the, I'm hoping when they say they're getting the island, they're clearing trees and exactly. you know getting the wild animals, you know, kind of sequestered off, and not the case. So, but it, it does look awesome. The only thing that is kind of a little intimidating about that is the 20 hour plane ride, the two days in Vegas for the COVID test, then another mm. plane ride, then the they were doing all their training for the week in the hotel room. It just seems wow. Yeah, getting used to a new time zone. I think they fought at like 6 a.m. their time. Like, wow. So, you know, beggars can't be choosers, but it's definitely – I mean, it would be a cool story to tell one day, but uh, I'm all for stacking the odds in your favor to win yeah. because we have a short window here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. whatever you got to do, hey, it's just, it's just great that hey, people are able to work right now in a time when a lot of people can't. So mm-hmm. beggars can't be choosers. But yeah. it is – what a crazy concept. Man, it's like literally like something like a bullcrap artist would like say, like I had to go fight on an island with you know, yeah. with a, man, I was a, <laughs> nobody knew about it kind of thing. And you're like, no, yeah. it's actually happening. You know, your, your grandkids wouldn't believe you, you know, but now they're no. Dead, so it's a big, a big that's funny. We're that we were talking about uh, us. I'm not going to call his name. Should I call his name, John? Who? Who? The artist we were talking about the other day. The the martial artist we were talking about the other day. Frank Du. Oh, Frank Dukes. Frank, 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 man, why Frank are you Duke worried about day. Frank Dukes, man? That joker, like... <laughs> he might used to touch a depth on me or something. What are you going to do? Are you gonna do? I mean, like, what are you kill me through like... the Zoom or something, man. <laughs> why are you worried about that? Yes, I'll just that go down to Wilmington. That bull like, crap go to Saudi dog. <laughs> Frank Dukes, yes, him. Go ahead, keep going. <laughs> no, we were just talking I was just talking about that, just all the, the fake martial arts and stuff mm. and just how, how much um, charlatanism... <laughs> uh, there, there has been out there in the past. Um, I guess that kind of takes me to the, to this to this question. So we 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 talked about where you are, but like, how did you get into this? You know, there's nobody. You know, this is a long road. Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts are not a dime a dozen. Uh, mm-hmm. You don't get those in two years uh, or two and a half. You know, it, it takes a long time. It literally, you could be a PhD in in less time than a BJJ black belt. So what brought you to this point? What, you know, what got you involved in martial arts? How did that all start? Yeah. Um, so for me, I always say the same thing and it really is true. It's not like a, I didn't go back and change the tune. It was the power Rangers. It was the, the good power Rangers, not the, <laughs> not the seventh generation power Rangers the original. Cause I had older brothers and sisters. So I got all the good shows, you know, when it was like the, I was born in 93. So by the time I was watching, you know, 2000, I was watching like old Saved by the Bell, Boy Meets World, all the good stuff. I got the good Power Ranger. So I wanted to be, I wanted to be a Power Ranger. I wanted to do karate like uh, the Green Ranger and the Red Ranger did. But lucky, thank goodness, it was 1999 when we started. My parents sent my brother first. He was playing baseball. They said it was town politics why he wasn't playing. I think he was just a bad athlete. Um, <laughs> hopefully he'll see this. You know, he'll be he'll be writing into you guys. He'll be what's like, your, that's what's, not. What's your brother's name? Uh, Steve. Steve. He said it. He said you were sucking at baseball. That's, right. that's what he said. Yep. He said you could player. not start the broad side of a barn. Sorry, yep. Steve. And that's, that's exactly it. And uh, so they said, okay, we'll send him to karate. If it works out, then when, you go, when you're of age to go to school and do sports and all that, we'll send you. Perfect. He went. That year he was there, was, uh, the instructor got his blue belt, and he was going into Philadelphia every, every other day or so to train jiu-jitsu. He got his blue belt in jiu-jitsu back then. You're a blue belt. You can go teach at your karate school. Yeah. Changed the whole academy over by the time I got there. So wow. so lucky that my first day was a jiu-jitsu lesson. Wow, and uh, ever since, I just loved it. You know, as a kid, and my mom's rule, which I actually got to give her credit for, was, you know, you can do something every season, but you're not going to be the kid that gets changed out of his jiu-jitsu uniform, puts on his baseball uniform. We're not eating dinner together. So mm-hmm. you can do whatever you want. But you have to stop jiu-jitsu for that season, do baseball or basketball, whatever it is, and then you go back. Mm. And I, I, I liked it so much, and I had friends there, and uh, I was like, oh, no-brainer. The other thing that comes with that was I compete like once or twice a year, every year as a kid, and I was just god-awful, just the worst. Like, go out, get submitted, talk about participation medals, like, you know, <laughs> out the wazoo. And I heard a quote, like, maybe like two, three years ago that put it all in perspective. Rejection breeds obsession. I was like, wow, I was terrible. I think I was like, oh, if I get good, everybody's going to like think I'm, you know, the man and all this stuff. And um, 
it was just it was a no brainer to just keep trying, keep trying. I was I mean, from six to sixteen, not one gold medal. That's not made up. That's not I probably won like two or three matches. Yeah. Individual wow. matches the entire time. Wow. And uh so much so that like um my dad was like, Look, like, you know, uh, the tournament was every summer. We'd go down the shore in New Jersey. He's like, Look, like, we're giving up a beach day, like the tournament's a hundred dollars. Like, I'm not going to I'm not going to uh you know, I'm not going to waste the whole day and a hundred dollars. <laughs> if you're going to lose in 15 seconds, we can't do that anymore. So I was kind of retired, you know, put down like an old horse. Um, and I like, think about it all the done, time. Joe. We done Joe. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's fantastic because it builds that oh, I got to get better at this, you know? And the other thing that came with that was my instructor. You know, I have to always go back to him because when you talk about like being a man and being a good man, walking in, you know, walking in God's image and just being a great human being, but also a tough guy, but also being compassionate. Like John Hassett, my original instructor was just amazing with that. You know, I, I came from really great parents and I think it's tough. You know, I'm about to have my first child too. So I th I've spent a lot of time oh, thinking about this stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now I go back and I'm thinking about how important it is like your parents, you know, but you can't be with your kid all the time. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who the coach and stuff is, like, you know, as young boys, especially, we start to look up to our coaches or mm. we've got to make sure they're good people. And, mm. you know, my parents kind of would always pass the baton every day to him. And I'm very lucky that he was such a good, good man, you know. And uh, he put in me since I was eight years old. I, we, uh, we switched schools when I was eight to go train with him. He was my first instructor's instructor. Wow. And he never drank. He never touched a drug. He always was very vocal about that. He can. I mean, he can recite the Bible. It's mm -hmm. amazing. He's like one of those like obsessive. He does it with jujitsu too. He's watched the John Danaher team DVDs <laughs> for over two hundred hours. Wow! I'm like that's psychotic. You know, yeah. it's amazing. But uh, so he's just that kind of person, you know. And the thing for me was, I would go there and I was in adult class ever since I was eight. So wow. all of a sudden, you know, I went from not really having a ton of friends at school, I was quiet, whatever it might be, dorky, to these 40 year olds, 30 year olds, they're showing me respect. Like I'm one of them. My instructor is taking me to the side and showing me, making me feel special, showing me extra moves just cause I'm the only kid in class. And, yeah. uh, I think, you know, you always want to make your parents proud, but sometimes you rebel from them. Mm. Uh, with him, it was like, Oh, and I want to make him proud too. He's not my parent. He, yeah. he just helped me out. So it was really good to have that balance of, of just good people. And I, I credit my parents for that, putting me around those people. Yeah. And, um, yeah. it kept me on the straight and narrow all through high school. I've never touched a drug. I've never mm -hmm. had a sip of alcohol and I had no desire to, you know, and never had a desire to be running around partying, lying, whatever it might be. And, um, I think that was the big thing that kept me in. It was, yeah, I may not be good at this, at least when I was 14, 15, but I have a place to call home. I, you know, yeah. kind of like we we're talking about with salty dog and then, you know, stuck with it. And he'd always say, it's going to click. It's going to click. It's going to click. Your body hasn't caught up to your brain yet. When it does, I promise you it'll click. And, you know, I had a lot of trust in him. So, and it did. It clicked at 16 and then a little more at 17. And by 18, I was beating black belts and then, you know, with, with a purple belt on. And, and then it was just like, oh, now I really found my purpose because not only do I like this, but I'm getting good at it. So, uh, and then all of a sudden you have the floor with 40 year old men, you're 18 and people are asking you for advice on stuff. Maybe that's not even jujitsu. And you're like, whoa, like, I don't know about life, but. <laughs> You know, it could be a power trip or it can be you feel respected. And it was just this great feeling of like, oh, wow, I could grow into that. I can be the guy at the head of the table when I'm 40 or 50, really helping people change their lives. And um, I don't think I, I always wanted to be in the UFC since I was 10, but mm. that didn't seem realistic because I was so bad. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, push came to shove and some things happened in my life where I think when I was going to college, so we moved to Myrtle Beach, um, trying to get in state tuition. My parents kind of half retired there. And uh, I always think that like, you know, God's hand in your life. I don't like when I fight, I don't pray for a win. I don't, I don't believe in that. I don't think God cares about your MMA record or, <laughs> you know, your paycheck or, yeah. um, I, I always pray for safety for me and my opponent, you know, and, and, and I pray that I can perform to the best that I'm capable of and he can too, you know, mm. but, uh, I believe the same thing with life. Like when I'm walking in a way that I'm not really meant to be walking in, I think life, I call it God's hand. Some people that maybe haven't found that yet call it life, but you get that little kick in the wrong, in the right direction. Mm. And uh, that's kind of what happened with me in fighting. I was going to school. I was trying to do the right thing. A bunch of things happened at once where the only thing that made sense was for me to fight. And I was doing everything not to fight MMA because yeah. my parents didn't want me to. 
Um, I was finishing school. It was just all these things that I was kind of making other people happy. Yeah. And no matter what I did, it led to, oh my gosh, I literally have to fight to, mm. to do what I need to do. And um, I don't really know how I got here. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> it's just all these things where you're like, oh, wow, if that person wasn't there this time, if I never met John Hassett, if my parents didn't know, because they wouldn't have put me in jiu-jitsu knowingly. They don't like rough stuff like that. Yeah. If they didn't know the difference, if they did not know the difference between karate and jiu-jitsu, I'm not, you know, I'm sitting behind a desk somewhere right now. So <laughs> I really think it's just there's a plan for our life. And uh, yeah. don't know how I got here. Can't explain it other than just thanking God that I'm here. And it's been amazing. But um, wouldn't change it for the world. But definitely my parents, my brother, for sure, because I always wanted to, a, be like him, but then B, beat him up because he's six years older than me. And, uh, Who does that want to be their older brother up? Exactly. And uh, that was the big one, you know, because now, I mean, UFC is awesome, but the fact that I can hold that <laughs> over his head is phenomenal. And, uh, and John Hassett, you know, like I talk about him all the time everywhere I go. And uh, it's amazing that the relationship we were able to form, even now, like I only get up there once a year, you know, mm. uh, just the way we keep in touch. And that was really full circle, too. My UFC debut was having. You know, he, he was there. My dad was there. He had never been to a fight of mine. You know, like I said, they weren't too keen on the fighting thing. And then he started seeing the careers. Like, wow, this is great. And uh, all of a sudden, our family names around the arena and in, in, in lights, you know. And yeah. my grandfather came to one jiu jitsu tournament ever. It was my first one. And I got a participation trophy. I lost. <laughs> there was a break between gi and no gi for the kids. And him and my grandmother were like, uh, we're going to head out. <laughs> And I was like, wow, like, I didn't even do good enough to keep my grandparents. If you can't please your grandparents, you're terrible. So, uh, yeah. So, full circle, having them all there to see it. And it was almost like, oh, wow, like, you didn't waste your efforts. So, it was, uh, it was cool. It was really cool. I don't really know. It's all kind of weird accidents, but I call it God's hand, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing, too. It's like there's this, there's this when, when you feel God's calling, when you feel God's, this is what God's calling you to do, there's this perseverance that has to happen. There has to be, um, that, that will drive you. Uh, and, and God will not give you any peace. Like if, if you're not doing what he's calling you to do and, and you're, and you're his, he's not gonna give you any peace about it. He's gonna, he's gonna keep pushing you in that direction until you surrender to it. And I think, you know, to, to be given the platform that, that God's given you and that's going to give you in the future, um, with, with this, I mean, just even right now, like you said, with being on the, the, the smaller, uh, channels or whatever, you know, whatever that's still, mm -hmm. I mean, you're freaking you as paid professional fighter in the mm -hmm. biggest promotion in the world, you know, and that's, I man, that's a huge platform that God's given you to, to, to glorify him, man. And so that's a, you know, that's it. It's, it's following that calling and who knows what else God has for you. But, but uh, I, th I think that when, when you, when you, God gives you that call and, and you know it, you, he's going to, he's going to make sure you, you, uh, you follow it, you know, whether you want to or not, or not yeah. uh, it's going to be pretty miserable if you're not. And so, uh, so yeah, it's just interesting to see that perseverance that has to be there. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. The, the, the thing too, man, like the, there's people that will listen to your testimony that wouldn't necessarily listen to somebody else. Mm. You know, I feel like God's positioned you uniquely. And, and, and for me, just the whole, the whole art, you know, the UFC, MMA in general, I, I think is actually, a, it's a beautiful thing to watch really. You know, some people watch and they're like, oh, that's, that's so bloody and stuff. I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm like, read the Bible. There's so much fighting in the Bible, but just the, the, level of you know brotherhood that you see in the in the cage and and uh, i think god is is giving you guys like you and uh, i had the privilege uh, several years back of being uh, leonard garcia's chaplain mm. for one of his fights wow. uh, down, in, down in texas and I, I, I prayed with him and his family and and before the fight and my man walked in to break every chain mm. wow like, that was That's his walk-in song yeah and God opens these incredible doors for you guys. So it's so it's exciting to me because as a fan, I'm, you know, I, I like to find people that I can really like, just, you know, support everything. Cheer they're doing. for. Like, <laughs> cheer for. Yeah. Because I mean, because honestly, I like Conor McGregor, 
but I yeah. can't, but I can't cheer for everything Conor McGregor does. No. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm like, I like you, but Conor, but you know, so it's, it's great when you find guys that are, are sold out in their faith and, you know, you're excited about being a father and, and just, it, it's cool to see that, man. And so it's, it's neat to hear what God's doing uh, in your life. Now I'm going to shift gears on y'all for a minute. Cause you are talking about jujitsu tournaments. I watched, <laughs> I watched part of a, of a match uh, from a few years ago, I think it was like 2017. I did not get to finish it, uh, so maybe you can uh, talk to me a little bit about it. But you, you were rolling with Gary Tonin. Oh yeah, 2015. Yeah, really. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. Like everybody, else, <laughs> like everybody else in the world, he heel hooked me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you were uh, in there from what I saw until I got interrupted. And, and that's the thing. Yeah. Well, you know what? Actually, I, I'm up. I should have told you on Pathological Liar I actually won that match. Exactly. He won it. Yeah. 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 Since since you didn't finish it, we'll just uh, just make sure you tell everybody you know. Uh, But yeah, you know. Just don't tell him. Yeah. That was one of the matches, honestly. Like, um, that was a game changer for me, which, you know, a loss. We do grow from losses, but uh, it gave me more confidence than anything. I mean, yeah, people can say, oh, you know. Maybe he was – it's like Connor with Floyd, right? And I'm obviously not Connor, but uh, when people say, oh, he was cat with a mouse, nobody's letting you uppercut their head <laughs> halfway to the yeah. moon, you know? Yeah. He might – if he was just slipping punches, yeah, maybe he's playing mm-hmm. with them. He's not letting them hit him. He won rounds, you know? Yeah. And same thing with the match with Gary. People like, you know, you could – maybe I could doubt myself and go, maybe he was just letting me, feeling me out. That I felt him. He was going hard. He was breathing yeah. heavy. And um, obviously he did what he needed to do, but – it was just a match for me being like, wow, that guy's like a first degree black belt. I'm a new brown belt. Like that guy's the best in the world. I think I could be one. Like it was a really good yeah. seeing like, oh, he's a little older than me. He's a little more muscular. Like I'm going to grow into my body. Like I was 21 or so at the time, but it was almost like a, well, that's not unattainable, you know, because you mm-hmm. watch on TV, you don't see these guys. You think they look huge. Or you think they look special or fast or whatever it might be. And, um, yeah, just an amazing opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a funny story about that day was I won my first match, you know, against another brown belt. I got Gary in the semifinals. And in the finals, I actually had a guy from when I was growing up, he owned like not a rival gym because it was peace, like we liked them. Yeah. But another gym in town that had a really good black belt, uh, Daniel Tavares, who's like pretty well known. He's won Pan Am's a black belt and stuff. And I was like, oh man, like I rolled with him when I got my purple belt. He like arm bar me real hard. <laughs> he's just like, you know, uh, really competitive guy. He's, he's yeah. a really good Brazilian black belt, like super yeah. competitive, very aggressive. And I was like, man, this is the time to, we're going to get this guy back. We, 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 yeah, for third place. And they go, all right, the tournament's taking a three-hour hiatus. Go eat, shower, whatever you got to do. We're going to come back tonight for the third place matches and the finals. I'm like, man, I can't wait to call Mr. Hassett and tell him, I got better that guy that used to beat some of our guys when we were kids. Like, I got him, and I'm barely out of being a kid here. And he doesn't show up. He had to go to something or coach somebody. I don't know. He, he didn't come back. He, he was scared. He was scared. He was scared. Yeah, he heard. And they're like, so uh, Brian Simmons from Grapplers Quest came up, just the mm-hmm. nicest guy. And he goes, uh, yeah, we're going to bring you out for your match, and we're going to give you third place. And I'm flashing back to being a little kid again. <laughs> uh, you're, you're not giving me the third place. I mean, I want a match, but I'm coming off a loss. You're not ruining my day. I'm <laughs> earning that. I go, dude, is there anybody that I can go against that maybe – and he's like, he, he stopped. He's really funny because he's just like a very, he stops, he looks around, and he just pulls me in for this hug. And he's like, I'll find someone for you. I love your spirit. <laughs> and then uh, they got somebody and I ended up taking third. So it was a great yeah. day, but it was just so funny because I was like, you are not, A, I lost. I wanted to beat Gary. So I wanted to, I'm like, this is my chance to use his name to, you know, yes. and yeah. uh, which is terrible because I can't stand when people like, even in the gym trying to like, Oh, yeah. You know, go extra hard. I'm going to tap you and tell my friends. Yeah. So I it's better. I didn't UFC get fighter. Like, mm. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> now I'm flashing back to being a kid. All my insecurities come out. I'm like, you're not giving me that participation medal. I'm going to, I'm going to throw it in the garbage. <laughs> oh man. That's, that's great. That's it, it's, it's interesting, man. Like, like talking about people coming in the gym and like you're it, the gym is, 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 you're going to get tapped. Like you, there's, there's times that, you know, you, everybody gets tapped. Everybody gets, you know, whatever. Um, you know, there's, there's times like, you know, when, when I'm rolling here, I'll, I'll catch my black belt sometimes, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and it's not like, Oh, I'm, I'm deserve my black belt. It's like, 
No, I just and know his game. John he can't might. swallow correctly now because he didn't tap. <laughs> see, that was a dude. That was a, see. There was <laughs> see, this is what happened, Joe. I was out in in Arizona, right? And um, there was a gym out there um, that um, I can't remember the guy's name that that runs. He's a uh, world champion guy. Oh, uh, maybe Tanquino's gym. No, uh, it's not him. It's or uh, Megaton. No, it's Megaton. Not, Megaton, not Megaton. Oh. It's uh, no, not, that's all I know. John doesn't <laughs> remember because he was unconscious so long. <laughs> no, he see that dude wasn't there. Um, anyway, uh, but I was at rolling his gym. Uh, got him, a buddy of mine, John Korea, uh, runs active self protection. Um, he was, he, I was hanging out with him, went and rolled to the gym. He's he trains at, and there was a uh, we're doing no gi, and there was this uh, purple belt that was there, and I was a blue belt at the time, and and um. And we're just rolling, you know, kind of thing. And he sunk this freaking, he, he tried to like sink this um, um, Ezekiel from the bottom end. And I was passing his guard and, 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 and I got around and it like, I felt my neck, like my throat kind of pop a little bit. And I was like, that's fine. And I kept going and, and he kept, the, kept trying to do the Ezekiel. And I was like, it's not really a so much on my throat. It's not really getting any kind of any pressure on my arteries. It's fine. So I was defending this <laughs> because and his it, neck had broken. <laughs> <laughs> so and so afterward I, you know i held off made it to the round it was fine and i got up and then i was like i can't swallow i was like oh my god and i had to like literally push my esophagus over to swallow and i'm like oh, that's normal <laughs> <laughs> and so for like five months i didn't go to check that i was like i just probably pulled something it's fine or it's just bruised or it's what you know uh and finally i went to the uh, ear nose and throat guy uh here in 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 uh, Thailand, and he liked to scope it. And he's like, "Oh yeah, you broke your hadal bone or whatever it is." That oh my god! Like, yeah, and it's, it's collapsing your windpipe. So like, there's wow. like, like half of my windpipe is closed up because of. Oh my uh, goodness! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway so that's what he was talking about with not tap that's i just hilarious. like to tease him about it every now and again yeah. uh, just every now and again like every but every other day it's just every every other day but, that's but that, hilarious. that takes me back to what i said earlier though about why i think martial arts should be in every school mm. is because you yeah. do get tapped it, it, mm. you, it teaches you humility i mean I, I watched uh, the academy I trained at, uh, the Pendergrass Academy of Wake Forest. Uh, amazing guys, two brothers, they're twins. And I watched uh, Professor Guy one morning. I don't, he probably wouldn't even remember this. We had a guy in there who was uh, training to be an MMA fighter and uh, bit, way bigger than Guy. And he just literally just played with him. I mean, just, mm. you know, just played with him. And, it was, and he was just smiling the whole time. And, and, and they were, they were having a good time, but it was just, you know, there's guys struggle. It's weird paradoxical. John and I talk about this all the time. On one hand, guys are passive. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's weird. Like guys are passive about things they need to be like, not passive about. And, and then we get all up in arms. Cause you know, like you said something, somebody says something about your race car driver. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> And so I'm like, what, what are we doing? But it, it, there's this, uh, we also, it's, it's this paradox because we're passive, but at the same time, guys struggle with pride. Yep. And, and, and which is the absolute root of every single sin. And over the dumbest things. Yeah. A hundred percent. There's yeah. things that are worth fighting for. And then there's things that, you know what I mean? Like you're a hundred percent right. Yeah, absolutely. Like getting, like getting submitted. You, I mean, that's a mm -hmm. part of life. Now, Am I going to lay down and let somebody know? I'm probably one of the most competitive people you'll meet. But if I get tapped, I'm going to come back. I'm, if somebody asks me, I'm going to – I'll do it right. The first time I walked in the Salty Dog, I'm like, oh, I got my – I was like a week into having my black belt. I'm like, yeah, this, this guy, John Salter, he's really good, but we're going to have good, competitive – I got subbed three times in five minutes. I'm like, <laughs> I might want to get – and I, when I went back to Myrtle Beach because I was still living there, how was the training? I got crushed. <laughs> you know, now on the same token, like, but where's the shame in that? It's not like I lost a tournament. It's not like I, so what's, but there's one day that matters. That's competition day or fight day. Right but now on the same token, we've had like uh, one guy specifically came down and trained with us and he like won some big tournaments at Brown belt in the gi. And then I think he got his black belt, but he came and trained and was talking about, you know, I uh, came down I'm fighting MMA. I don't really train in the gi. We train in the gi. We kind of steal made or maybe would have got me like two zero or whatever, like points. And then no gi. I saw him two times in five minutes. Um, and then I'm watching John just do what John does, which is just <laughs> like talking the most humble him. killer. Yeah. He, <laughs> it's like, like, I don't care. Killer. I yeah. That. Like, I don't care who walks in. You're like, 
oh, John's beating a world-class guy again over there. Like, whatever. Normal day. And then, uh, you know, the guy's like, oh, I'll be back every weekend to train with you guys. Never comes back, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. A year goes by, gets, gets a black belt, trains with some guys that are, you know, it's a smaller school, and he's clearly, you know, killing everybody, and comes back. And I go, I'm pretty good with, like, uh, reading people – I don't know if it's from being a Yankee or being a kid in 40 year old jiu-jitsu classes <laughs> and just sitting really and watching both. Yeah. I go, Oh John, this guy doesn't real. He, he's convinced himself. That's how much better he got in this year. Comes back. But now made the mistake before we rolled of being like, guys, I got my schedule figured out. I'm going to be here all the time. Like <laughs> every week you can count on it. Cause he's already got it figured out. I'm going to smash you too. You know, mm. now it's gi. Now I sub him in the gi. Now John does what John does again. <laughs> and now you know i still go to Myrtle beach every week to box and do some mma with my old teammates it's trickling down the thing yeah this guy said he came in you guys just weren't worth rolling with and you know he said you were terrible and i go oh man like that's a guy that has like you said taking pride in the wrong things like exactly. dude wow. yeah. don't fight the tournaments that hard like why are you yeah like oh just and like you said dude think about if people fought for their families and their marriage as hard as they did as for their political party on Facebook or their, you know, whatever it is. Like Absolutely. we're putting our eggs in the wrong basket. I think like I'm going to fight tooth and nail in practice, but I'm going to admit when you beat me up. Like, you know, like yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. yeah. Jiu-jitsu is weird like that. Now I am pretty bad though. I'll, I'll visit the school and try and tap the instructor. And, like, <laughs> I'm bad like that. Like what? that's the thing. Like if, if I think if you put, if you have a black belt on, that's a target it's a game. It's fair yeah. game. It's a target. Like if you're the instructor or if you're like whatever, you you just you don't realize everybody's gunning for you. And like it just but that's just the chain of like just the the, the food chain. And like your purple belt, every blue belt's looking for you. Every blue belt and white belt's looking for you. You know, it's like everybody yeah. just goes up, 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 you know. And I think jujitsu's changed like that too, because if you watch like uh Henzo Gracie legacy and stuff like in front of the students, like high in and Henzo are trying to kill each other, they're yelling at each other, they're going really hard. And that's the norm like Dude, I'm going to train <laughs> with John in front of all the students. And if I take my beating, I take my beating, and that's yeah. fine. Because, But people will look or like, uh, I'll go to Myrtle Beach, and me and my buddy Cody, Cody Jones, really good up-and-coming fighter. He's 7-3. and three, been fighting forever. Good black belt, great black belt. We, like I teach a morning class, and it's all newer guys, mm-hmm. and then he comes sometimes. Mm-hmm. And we battle right there. And I'm like, people will look like, oh, like that's not supposed to happen. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know when that happened in jiu-jitsu where like, the, the black belts only roll behind closed doors. I'm like, if I'm going to get subbed, you're going to see it. If I'm going to sub him, you're going to see it. We exactly. slap hands and we keep going. Like sparring, same thing. Like sparring's open sparring. You can come yeah. watch. Like nobody's, and I'll, you know, I'll dap him up at the rim. Like, dude, good body shot. Like, yeah. I'm not going to look at you and lie to you after sparring and go, I wasn't hurt there because you're not my opponent. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. Now, <laughs> yeah. Now, if you hit me hard, I'm going to get you back. We're going to go yeah. hard and bring the best out of each other. But, dude, I want you to get feedback so you win your fight because we're all training in the same room. I don't know when that became this, like, weird – I don't know. Jiu-Jitsu used to be a lot more rugged and tough, I think. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't know when that happened. But it, uh, the, the social- first academy opened in a strip mall. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's when the donkey yard became a thing. That's what it was. When the oh. donkey yard yeah. became a thing. Yeah. Pretty That's much so social media. Prison, that is. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, uh, I, I, I think that is something like you look at like social media. Like everybody, it's, it goes back to the ego thing. Like because I mean, you look at when Marcelo Garcia puts out, you know, a ton of his of his stuff, rolling with people, and he's, I mean, he's freaking a jujitsu guru kind of, you know. But, but even guys that give him a run for his money, or you know, he he puts it out. Yeah, uh, yeah. and it's so I do I. I'm an anxious dude as it is. I couldn't imagine being him. You don't know who's going to roll in. You're in New York City. People have layover flights and seminars. Dude, the best guys are coming through there. He's like, yeah, if I get tapped, it'll be on the, you know, only 250,000 people will see. No big deal. Like, yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's a guy that's secure. Like, that. Yeah. we all need to be like him, I think. Exactly. Exactly. Because that's the thing, is, I think, too, if, is the guys that actually train and actually, you know, are, are training, like, are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, there's everybody just respects you for freaking rolling man like if you're the worst white belt in the world ain't nobody gonna care like because you're rolling you're yeah. you're out when there when i come train something. with you i'm gonna get a special rash guard made with a typewriter on it <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> it's, so it's just like you know the death roll typewriter <laughs> collection okay 
<laughs> and I'm, I'm, that may have went over my head there, Anthony. I'm not sure what you're talking about with a typewriter. Tap. You tap oh, the typewriter. Oh, see that that just Joe. Did you get that? Did you did you? Understand? I did. Yeah, that's why I was laughing what? so hard. What? See, I use that expression all the time. I, I like to. Oh. I talk in my moments of pride, which are crippling. I'm like, oh, I tap that guy like a typewriter <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I've never heard that, but I'm gonna start. But you miss living over there in Thailand. I guess yeah. the lingo <laughs> is not, is not yeah. filtered, not not filtered down. Um, but yeah, so that's you know, it, it's just interesting to see like you know how ego does play in, into things, and how can it can really mess up, mess up your your your, your everything. Yeah, it can mess up everything. Ego and pride will. We all say like pride can get you killed, you know, kind of thing. And yeah. So, uh, well, I, I think. I think but, Go ahead, buddy. You know, no, no, you ahead. first. You first. No, nope, you first. After you, Anthony. <laughs> All I was going to say, it was probably what you were going to say, was just that that ego and pride thing is, and you said, and, and, and Joe, you hit this, man, if we as men would fight as hard for our marriages and our kids and, and just our walk with Christ, mm as we do for all these other things, what a difference it would make. You know, I, I'll share, I don't mind. I'm just going to be real and honest because that's all we do here. You know, John and I, we don't have, I, this, Joe, this is going to come as a shock to you, but John and I do not have it all figured out. <laughs> oh, good. We're all in the same club then. <laughs> I mean, I got it more figured out than, than Anthony does. I'm just saying. He I mean, does. He does. 99.9% but, uh, of everybody has more things more figured absolutely. out than Anthony does. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's like even in like in my own walk, I mean, God's been like pointing things out to me and I've become sensitive to things in my own life that little by little he's like chiseling things away and he's using john to do a lot of it actually conversations that he and i'll have uh you know things that i've oh, I had, had kind of like allowed a little bit of a foothold i feel like i'm like uh you know and i came to this realization i shared this with my wife you cannot this is going to sound earth shattering right you you cannot walk with christ you cannot live with one foot in the world system and another foot on his mat mm. you got to step all the way on the mat I just you you can't you cannot yeah. vacillate between two you uh, even a little. Hey, you can't you can't serve two masters. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and I think a lot of us and and you know I'm I'm, ord, I'm an ordained pastor, right? And I still saw areas in my life where I was like, I am trying to serve two masters. I'm trying. Dang, it's like it's like it just slips right in, and you don't realize it. And so it's changed, it's begun to, to bring, you know, about some growth, if you will, and change in my life. And a lot of, it's interesting, a lot of what I thought was wrong with people around me, it turns out, was me. <laughs> yeah, what did they say, like three fingers point back at you and you point at somebody? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm guilty of that all the time with, uh, and that's the, I'm spending a lot of time thinking about all the we're stuck in the house, so what else am I going to do but think? And uh, it's funny because every time that I feel like I'm like, not un like I love fighting, but I get obsessed. I'm obsessed with, with winning. I'm a competitor, you know, and, and it's good to be like that. But like you said, you can't serve two masters. Like it's got to be. And uh, that's kind of where I, when I, my first loss, I was three and one. And I was like, oh, no, like UFC, UFC or bust, UFC, Bellator or bust, you know. How am I going to get that? Worrying about the end result, not the day to day, and not just being a better man, you know, making a living fighting, just doing my job, going to work every day, and getting better. And, I, and, I, and that's what, when I came back and got back and got, got a win, I said, the first thing I said in my interview, and I, I always go back to it to remind myself, I'm like, I got worried about things that I was, that I had no business worrying about. A, a regional title shot, because that was the golden ticket to the UFC. Being on TV, like none of that followers, none, none of that matters to me. It never did. Why do I care? You know. And now here recently with like the COVID stuff, same thing. Like I, uh, the initial lockdowns, we've loosened up a little bit here. Where now pro athletes can come and go and train as they want. Like that's made things easier for us. But just being this like almost like a monster, just being, you know, wanting to get in and get out. Let's get this fight out of the way and yeah. let's get this done because I, I can't lose my contract and all this stuff. And you're like, whoa, 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 like. 
two years ago, you would have been so blessed to have a contract to lose. Like, and, and I, and I start getting anxious and, and, and same thing, like, like our, uh, I'm ser- I'm serving a, a worldly master if I'm doing that. Like, if that's what the plan is for me is to not be in the UFC anymore one day, as much as that's a tough pill for a competitor to swallow, I need to swallow that pill and realize I'm serving one master, you know, and that is to walk in his image and then to serve my family and then to be a better man. And if it's not being a fighter, unfortunately for my ego, that's what it would be. Like, it's hard to understand that, but still also be in pursuit of a world championship, you know. Uh, that's something I struggle with every single day. And thank goodness for, you know, having talks with guys like you and, you know, our pastor at church delivers these amazing messages where last week was like specifically almost about that mm-hmm. to a T and I was like, wow, like that almost gets rid of all the anxiety I have about, you know, going into fight concerned about all these other things that don't really matter, you know, like, uh, so it's funny you say that because I'm right. That's exactly the battle that I think I fight every single day. Mm-hmm. And, and speaking of which, like you kind of talk about that idea. Um, recently you were, you were scheduled to fight, um, here in the, uh, this last fight right that was that mm-hmm. was out here june yeah yeah in june um and you had to you had to pull out uh the last minute there what what if you, if you don't mind talking about it, like what what yeah. caused you to, to have to do that so uh i knew i was gonna be fighting around may or june it was always april or may before covid yeah and then um everything hit they shut it down okay and then fights were coming back in may i signed with new management who's like specialty is like uh, Jason House, Iridium Sports, they're great. And their specialty, they, they have 10% of the UFC rosters, their guys, wow. or 15%. So they're really good at hopping guys in on short notice. So I hopped into a camp in March. I was like, it's coming. I spoke to Sean Shelby, told him I was having a baby in September, and I'd like to fight before then. He said, same thing. He said, April, May, or June. You know, May or June, then it became May or June. Yeah. And uh, I ended up being in camp for like three months. We got the fight about 18 days out with uh, Austin Hubbard, June 20th. I was like, oh, perfect. Great fight, tough guy, but yeah. really good matchup. All this stuff um, had been training so long and so hard. I was like, oh, I'm I'm overtrained. Like, yeah. I was if I looked like eye level, I was okay. If I lo- everybody's taller than me because I'm five <laughs> nine. Uh, so my training partners that are six foot. If I looked up, it was like I couldn't get my two eyes to merge into one and focus. And I was like, oh, wow. I don't feel right. I felt real tired, real flat. Yeah. But I still had some of my best sparring days. It was just like spar go home and sleep for 12 hours, get up the next day, wrestle hard, condition, go home and sleep for 12 hours. Like, oh, man. And uh, we were scheduled to leave on Tuesday. It was, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to – I know I don't have it, but I'm going to take a COVID test and see mm. so we don't get out there and get sent home. Yeah. And then I'm on my way to my last sparring session and pull out my phone just to check because of the red light. I'm like, I got a notification. I'm like, value detected. I don't know what that means. Can't they just say positive or negative? Yeah. So like I was calling anybody I know that like yeah. is a nurse or anything. And sure enough, uh, I had it, you know? Oh wow. And uh, I was all right. We, we were fine. I, t- I took a week. I had to take a week off. I already tested negative and all that. And I had some really bad back pain, lost my taste. That's yeah. the worst because yeah. I don't know if I want to live. If I can't taste my food. Like, <laughs> exactly. It was just so depressing eating, yeah. but um, it was all good, you know, but uh, I had to pull out obviously because yeah. you can't get sanctioned with that. Yeah. And um, so it was all good, but it was just, again, it was like one of these things where I was so bummed out and so mad. And, uh, but I think, because I was really much, especially with all the COVID stuff going on, in that mindset of like, let's just go out there, get this done, yeah. keep my contract. Like, whoa, 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 I'm going out there to earn something, not to not lose something. Yeah, yeah. It was just this negative. I was, a, I was just a monster to be around mm. in the gym, just one word answers and grumpy, and yeah. um, which wasn't the way I want to be, you know, and it was yeah. just, I, I thought it was being focused, but that's not who I am as a person. I should have known something was up then when I was feeling like that, you know? Um, so almost a blessing in disguise, you know, cause now I'll never, ever, ever, as long as I live, take for granted the privilege to go out and fight for a living and to, you know, have a platform and all that, because as dumb as it sounds, it was like, Oh, this is the perfect timeline. June, I'll fight, come home. We get a summer. I get to, you know, be have my baby when she gets here and then come back in the fall or winter and fight and, um, now we're counting down the days. I may not get to fight before that. And then mm. I'll have to fight in the fall right after. So it's, uh, yeah. again, is what it is a blessing, but, uh, it was very eye opening having to pull out of something. Cause I've never pulled out of a fight before. Yeah. Um, and then my management was like, Oh, don't come out and say it. Cause they'll make articles about it and all this stuff. And uh, now we're past that. So, yeah. um, but that's good. You know, it was frustrating cause then everybody's, and then you feel bad cause I'm fine. I'm healthy, you know, for, yeah. uh, you know, I was, 
you know, and people are like, we're praying, which I always appreciate a prayer, but <laughs> it was like, please give it to somebody that needs it. You know, people yeah. saying like, all oh, the pick me ups and stuff was really nice, but you're like, you want to be like, dude, I'm fine. I just have COVID. It's not a big yeah. deal. Like I'm one of the healthy young ones. I'm good. Yeah. Um, but it's all good. So hopefully we get a turnaround soon, but I've yeah. uh, been back training too. So now we've been in like a 20 week camp. So wow. whenever it comes up, I'll take it. I'll be excited for it. And I won't, yeah. I will not be in that mindset of, uh, let's just get in and get out and work and go home. What is that? That's not, yeah. that is not who I am. I love what I do. And I was just, in the, I was a monster to be around. Yeah. So it was, I learned a good lesson. And I think, again, I think God's hand. Thank you. Thank you, man. And, and that's something too. I think that we, we can get in these ruts. We can get in these, these things where we're, where we're not enjoying what God's given us. We're not enjoying the, I hate to say the, the journey and sounds so freaking trite, but instead of enjoying the, 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 the journey and, and seeing exactly where enjoying what God has given you right now, a lot of times we're too focused on the end result instead of going, okay, God is trying to take us somewhere to make us more like Christ to, to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to sanctify us through this whole thing. And, and a lot of times we can do that and on every walk of life. We can do that, but especially when it's something so like uh, focused as a, as an end date of like a fight, like this has to be, you know, yep. this is the day this is happening, you know, and, and I have to go in and, and, and do this. It, 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 it must be a very hard to, 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 to not have that mindset come in and, and go, let me just actually enjoy this time. Let me enjoy this, this time with my sparring partner. Let me enjoy this time with my family, uh, my new baby. That's, and that's one of the things like, man, it, is as, as uh, I, I miss my wife being pregnant because like, there's this anticipation and there's every day yeah. enjoyment of, 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 of man, my, what am I, what's my daughter going to look like? What's she, you know, what's she going to be like? And there's this beautiful anticipation that, you know, that's there um, that you can miss if, if you get too wrapped up in the end goal stuff. And so a hundred percent. Yeah. And that's all oh, we have a teammate uh, that trains us at Jimmo up in Gastonia outside of Charlotte, uh, Impa Kasaganai. And he is, just the most uplifting. He's like a devout, outspoken Christian. Just an amazing guy. He's, uh, I think, a year or two younger than me. Mm. And uh, we just have really good conversations together. And he's just the most, I mean, on the way to the cage, like, <laughs> smiling, singing. He walks out to, uh, uh, I think he walks out to Victory, like Elevation Worship. But yeah. he's always just upbeat. Mid-round, he's just like, his coach, will be, our coach will be like, how you feel? I'm like, blessed. Like, Whereas like, you know, John and I are not, we're not like that. We're like walking out to our death, you know, we're like, very, but he's like that every single day. Like he's just, awesome. and he means it. How you doing? He's blessed. And uh, being around him and we were talking about it, we went to lunch last week about, you know, cause he, he went on the contender series last season mm. too. And, you know, they were saying he was just the, it was the biggest robbery of a non-contract. Mm. Wow. He, he absolutely killed it, you know? And, mm. and he talks about that. And I'm like, man, like I'm mad about having to back out of a fight. Like, yeah. At least I have a UFC fight to back out of. Like he deserves to be there and didn't get it. And he's not having sour grapes. He's has to work his way back. He's on the contender series again this year when he That's already awesome. knocked it out of the park. And um, being around people like that, but they build you back up. And John, same thing. And because you. Um, you know the UFC was having fights and Bellator wasn't, so it's like yeah. again, at least I had a fight to pull out of. You know, and um, now they're back too, which is great. But like you said, it's just sometimes we just want to get to the end date where it's like, well, you're not enjoying the journey. And yeah. It's hard to do, but it's something I got to constantly work on. And, and it, <laughs> really, I think without my faith, I wouldn't have it. You know, I wouldn't be able to do it. So yeah. uh, Definitely. it's a work in progress. Thank you, yeah, man. I understand that, brother. Definitely. Anthony, what you got, man? Well, I was going to ask is we kind of land the plane uh, in our time together. I, I, we asked this, I think we asked something like this of John uh, Salter when he hung out, hung out with us. To our guys listening, what, what would you say, just kind of by encapsulating things, if you will, what would be the three biggest like takeaways, comparisons from the fight game to our faith uh, that you've learned and how they can apply them to their lives, whether they ever get in a cage or not? Yeah, uh, I mean, discipline, right? It's, it takes discipline to, to walk in the way we're supposed to walk, you know? And we all, we all mess up. We all fall short, and that's, that's one of the reasons we're so lucky to be saved by the grace of God, right, is we're all falling short all the time, and that's who we are. And it's like the fight game. You know, you can do – we can do everything right. We're still – we're natural-born sinners, and we're saved by, by God. It's the same thing for the fight game. I've had you know fights in camp where I've done every single thing right, 
and I've still fallen short. You know, I've gotten tired in the third round, even though I've had the lowest resting heart rate I've ever had or whatever it was, you know, um, is, is discipline to do what is right and, and, you know, day in and day out and to walk in the way we're supposed to walk, you know, and I think faith, um, having faith, that's you know, having faith that everything's going to work out the way it's supposed to work out, even when it doesn't seem like it. Uh, today, actually our pastor, we're doing like a little series on the Psalms and one today was from David and he kept saying, uh, when he was in the, you know, when he was kind of exiled and uh, when he was, you know, anointed king, but wasn't recognized as king and Saul right. was hunting him. And he's like, uh, our pastor was talking about, he says, how long, how long are you going to forsake me? How long? And I was like, man, it's nowhere near as dramatic because no one was hunting me. And I wasn't forsaken, but I was like, I felt like that mm. watching other people get signed or watching other people get their recognition. And I'm still, you know, fighting for ticket sales, but I'm 10 fights in as a pro coming back and having no money to bring home my wife and going, how long am I going to do this? Oh my gosh, I feel so, you know, and life's like that, right? Where sometimes I, I can't imagine some of the things that people go through. When I, I think about my problems, like they're, they're so minuscule compared to some of the things that people push through every single day. And the only thing that's getting them out of bed is, is, their, is their, their faith and, you know, their walk with Christ. Um, I think faith is just, is just tremendous, you know, and I think just being gracious, you know, in the fight game, we don't see enough of that. Um, but all my favorite fighters are very gracious, gracious people in victory and defeat. And yeah. I think, you know, with to have that grace, you have to be humbled. And I think that comes with, we have to be like that in our lives. You know, people walk around like they're, I always used to say it about jiu-jitsu. It was like, man, like it's so humbling. You know, I walk in and I get submitted by John. I'm like, man, I thought I was, I thought I was the man. And then, you know, John might go, you know, he, he, he had a loss to Shanji, you know, which, Oh, Shanji's the man. Then you see Hodge or flying arm bar Shanji. Like, oh, but then here's the thing is at the end of the day, I don't care who the best one is. There's still probably somebody out there we haven't heard of who's better. But no matter who the baddest guy on the planet is, they answer to the creator, right? And, and that's the thing that I think we all forget yeah. on whatever day it is, you know. And uh, it's funny because we always walk around like, not we always, but, you know, like yesterday I was driving in traffic and a guy did the U-turn. U-turn has to yield to right turn. We all know this. And uh, <laughs> I just gave a little you hug. Would think. Yeah, I gave a little, it was early. I'm on the way to practice. I'm like, I'm not mad. I just gave a little honk like, hey, you're about to kill me. And then just gave a little Italian hands like, whoa. And, you know, the guy gave me the middle finger and this and that. I said, oh, okay, I gave him a thumbs up. I was like, oh, shrug and gave him a <laughs> thumbs up. And he was furious. He wants to pull over and this and that. I'm laughing going, man, unless you're top ranked guy, like, <laughs> I don't think you want to do that. So I just, I just kept going on my way, you know, yeah. but it's funny is we all kind of at some point in our life are going to feel like that. Like we're this invincible and it comes with that grace and humility of knowing like, Hey, like I'm not, you know, and, and that's the thing is one of the things I think about too, is that humility of knowing there's someone else out there in fighting mm. that we have that, that we don't even know about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, I always think about when Aldo was training for McGregor and they go, we got the guy, that can mimic Conor McGregor tooth and nail. And you're like, oh, I'm sure he can. And then Aldo pulls out with a broken rib from this guy mm -hmm. beating him up. And you're like, oh my gosh, there really is a guy that just can't get his visa. Who's better than all of them? You know, and there's somebody in Dagestan that's probably better than Khabib and is going to beat me up and take my contract. So we have to have humility and we have to have grace. And I think that's in life, you know, because yeah. the second you're bragging about your fancy house or your big car or whatever it might be, uh, <laughs> you're going to get humbled real quick, yeah. you know, and that's just how it always seems to go. And, um, it's funny because my boxing coach is one of the most gracious, humble people I've ever met in my life. Um, had life by the tail, 26 years old, 27 years old. I think he was maybe 29 when he got diagnosed with leukemia. Mm. And yeah, and it's funny because, uh, you know, his wife had come back from college. They, they had, I think they had broken up for a little while or she just went away to school, came back. They had just started dating, all this stuff going his way. And he gets, I had a little back pain all of a sudden. I have leukemia. I think it's like a 26% survival rate. And you're like, wow. Okay, he goes through all the treatments. He's good to go. A couple of years later, he's like, man, life's great. Boom, right back again. Mm. Wow. And then from that, he was paralyzed. Mm. Couldn't walk, couldn't do anything. And literally, he goes, dude, he's like, it's like, a, like he always says, life's a fight, you know? Mm. He's like, I listened to the doctors. I listened to my wife. I prayed every single day. And I just kept telling myself, if I can move my big toe, I'm not paralyzed. Then I'll move two and three. And now it's amazing because the man can't walk very well at all. Mm -hmm. He has braces on. 
it's I mean, it's a struggle. He yeah. can't walk up into the cage between rounds, but he can hold pads. He can do footwork. He can – and it's just funny to see that he's just the most humble. He can be walking around like, man, I'm invincible. Can't kill me. No, like that man is the most humble, gracious person. I think that's just the biggest thing to take away is uh, is having that humility. I really think God just put these good people in my life, you know, and, and like getting to talk to you guys. It's just if we take that, I think if we're around people like, like that, like you got – I think it's going to be really hard to be that way. It'll keep us, you know, gracious. So that's all I got. That was good. I feel like Definitely. we should give an altar call out there. Like exactly. Wherever you are. Pull Just over. As I am and right now, start playing. <laughs> yeah, that was good, man. For real. That was good. That, that will, that will preach my friend. I, I'm not, Man, I'm not trying to like prophesy over your life, but I'm just saying when the UFC days are done, I don't know, Pastor Selecki. Oh know. gosh, I don't know, man. I'm not just, I just don't know. Yeah, then they'll show, they'll show that clip of me saying to Matt Wine, "I'm going to put you out of a job," and that cancel culture will be all over me. I can't, I can't bring that on God. That's a, that's. A, hey, that makes you feel any better, man? I heard even the great Stephen Furtick talking about. Losing it on a guy in an elevator. <laughs> so, uh, you never know. You never know. Yeah. John, take us to the house, man. Well, Joe, brother, man, we, like I said, we thank you so much for coming on. It's been an honor just to get to holler at you and talk with you, man, and just to hang out with you. It's been a, it's been a huge blessing, man. I hope, I know everybody out there has been edified and, and uh, sanctified and just, you know, lifted up by this conversation with you, man. And, and thanks for sitting down and hanging out with us on the, on the guys yeah. podcast, man. Thank you so much for having me, guys. It's so great to be able to talk about life, you know, and as it relates to fighting, but not just when's the next fight? When's this? How's your weight cut? Okay, cool. How do you see this fight going? You're like, I left my crystal ball at home, you know. I'd much rather talk about what's important to me, which is like the journey and, and, our, and our faith and our families. And so thank you so much, man. This is awesome. Man, thanks for, having, yeah, thanks for coming on, brother. We really appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right, well, guys, man, y'all, y'all come check us out. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, go to, to the YouTube channel, subscribe. Uh, the the Instagrams, follow us on the Grams, uh, and also go and check us out on the Facebook on our Facebook page, guys stuff, and uh, join us there, man. God bless you. We'll see you next week.